Welcome to Tomorrow's World Today, a show dedicated to the discovery of innovation and cutting edge technology. We showcase the latest developments from the greatest companies and smartest people in the world. Tomorrow's ideas are out there, and through our journey of inspiration, we will uncover the technology of the future. This is Inventionland World Headquarters. Here now is George Davison. Hey everybody, welcome to Tomorrow's World Today. I'm your host, George Davison, and I consider myself a bit of an expert on 3D printing. This 3D printer actually built this prototype, which let us test all of our engineering before we went to a final product and on to retail. But lately, I've been thinking a lot about the history of 3D printing. You know, it all started as an invention in the 1980s, as an idea from Charles Hall. And this was the world's first 3D printer, which has now grown up into a machine of that size. Wow! I also know a company that makes industrial scale 3D printers. They're out in Michigan. We're gonna wanna talk with them about how they're revolutionizing the manufacturing process. And then we're gonna go off to Arizona and talk to Honeywell Aerospace. I'd like to know more about what applications they're putting in place today and how printed parts are being used on aircraft and how 3D printing processes have sped up getting products to market. Finally, I'd like to be able to look into the future. How is 3D printing technology going to change manufacturing and all of our lives? Hey George, so I'm here in Wixom, Michigan, ironically just a few miles away from my hometown of Detroit and the home of a company called SLM Solutions, a pioneer in laser processing of aluminum and titanium. And they are a huge part of the origin story of 3D printing and additive manufacturing. So I'm going to go inside and meet up with someone who will give me the download on the history, the background, how it all got started and why. Hi, Jill. Hi, Darius. Welcome. Oh, it's great to be here to see where 3D printing is happening here in the U.S. But let's get started with a look at your history. Yeah, sure. So at SLM Solutions, we're uh, specifically focused on metal additive to make our 3D printed parts. So here behind us is a picture of the Holston Gate, which is in downtown Lübeck, where our headquarters are. The technology that we have today came from a base patent that resides at the Fraunhofer Institute in Aachen, Germany. Dieter Schwartz is an employee of ours still today, uh, works significantly on that base patent to improve the technology. And the technology that we're gonna see today, um, some machines that we have, some parts that we have, really are taking us into the future of aerospace. So come on, let's take a look. Yeah. So Jill, what is 3D printing and how does the technology work? So there's many types of 3D printing. Here at SLM, we focus on what we call select laser melting SLM. Uh, it is, you have a layer of powder and then the laser selectively melts what design you have put into the machine. There's many advantages to this, one of them being reducing weight or consolidation of parts or a complex geometry that you can't get with traditional or subtractive manufacturing. Let's take a look at some of the parts and the roles that they play in technology. Yeah, so we play in many different industries. This is an aerospace part, industrial parts, uh, these are medical parts, and then these are automotive parts. So this part in particular, this is part of a satellite, so take a feel of that. This is so light, why? That's a huge advantage to additive. It reduces the weight, and anything you would want to put in the air, you want to be as light as possible. Wow. So let's go take a look at the machines and watch the lasers yeah. dance.
Darius, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Peck Lim. Hi. He's in our nice global application engineering team, and he's going to take you on a technical journey of a part being printed. I'm excited to see how these are made. All right, so this is one of the parts that we made for our collaborators. Uh, so this is a single piece um, rocket engines. So effectively, what they have done is that they consolidated uh, some of those different components in this uh, design itself into just one solid part. Like, for example, they have the injection head, um, you know, the inlets for the fuel, and also the combustion chamber all being done, um, you know, uh, in one solid piece. Um, would you like to see how it's printed layer by layer? I would, yes. So on this screen right here, you actually could see one of the layers that kind of coincide with these positions right here. As we scroll up, you can see how the lasers build up this layer by layer. So we're talking thousands of very thin layers. Yes, you're right. This is how the parts is being printed on the machines here. Uh, right now, we are at about layer 500, which is right around here. So for this case, we still had about 6,000 layers to go. How long is that going to take? Um, that's going to take about two and a half days. Two and a half days? Yes. And you know, as you could see here, the lasers, they are firing at, and tracing all these paths. Um, so, you know, this is what you're referring to, that lasers dancing. And you can actually see the lasers dancing in the, uh, the chamber there. And it does look like they're dancing. <laughs> they are. Speaking of which, uh, I think the, uh, the lattice cube is almost done. Uh, so actually, we can remove that part from the machines over there. OK, let's look at that. So we have the build plate set out on the bandsaw. So the next step, what we're going to do is that we're going to cut those parts off the build plate. And we actually have a surprise for you. Uh, we're going to send you to Honeywell, one of our customers, to see how they actually use our machines to print out parts for aerospace applications. We've made it here to Phoenix, Arizona and Honeywell, and now I'll get a chance to take a look at how those parts that were being made with additive manufacturing at SLM and Wixom are being used in aerospace. Darius. Hi, John. Hi, glad you could make it. I want to take you over to the flight line. We have some really cool stuff to show you. That's what I came here for. <laughs> Welcome to the flight line. I'm going to take you on this Embraer 170. It's one of over a dozen aircraft we have where we put our products on there that we design and manufacture here at Honeywell. This is where all the action happens. You got it. That's right. John, this is one of your test planes. So tell me what goes on on board here. So we use this aircraft to qualify, test, refine all the products, all the parts that we design and manufacture. Whether it's a engine component, we'll put an engine on over here, or if it's a heat exchanger part that controls the cabin system, or maybe an avionics chassis, a me mechanical chassis that's in the behind a, a display, or a flight control unit. Um, all those parts, we'll have these flight operations team assemble on this aircraft, and then we will fly it around actually all over the world to test and qualify these products. And, and so actually, I want to take you on a walk back, Darius. This uh, aircraft is set up a little bit different from a normal plane. We've set this up to make it easier to integrate some of our products and test them more quickly. Let me show you that. So what we have in this part of the plane is basically a duplication of the cockpit, what the pilots are seeing, but also we're recording all the parameters of the plane as we're testing those products, the, the parts that we talked about. As they're being tested on the aircraft, engineers are sitting here watching all the instrumentation, making sure that these parts are performing like they should, reliably, safely, and you know, easy for the pilots. Hey, now I want to take you over to our lab where we actually print the parts that we, that we were talking about. Okay.
Daria, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, our additive leader, Brian Bauman. Hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Brian leads all of our additive efforts here at Honeywell Aerospace. And this is where the excitement happens here in our additive lab. If you can see these engine mount parts, this is an old traditional technology, pouring molten metal into a mold and then machining it. And this is an additive part. Look at the difference. Big difference in the way they look. Uh, hold them in your hand. What do you, what's? Wow, much what's, heavier, yeah. Much heavier. This additive part is easily half the weight of this traditional technology. And you can imagine on a plane, flying in the air, every ounce we can take off the plane is another passenger you can put on and, and cargo and require less power from the engines. I mean, weight on a plane is a big deal. What about production time? That is where it, it even gets more exciting. Um, this part, the traditional technology, usually takes over six months. But this additive one, Brian and his lab here can print that in less than a day. Wow. So things get so much simpler. This is, this is really transforming the industry. Well, with that, I am going to leave you in good hands with Brian for the rest of the tour. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Take good care. To Talk you. to you soon. Great. All right, Brian, what do you have for me? So I have these 3D printed parts that were made here in our facility with these SLM machines. And uh, to, you know, to kind of build off of what John was saying about how additive can transform our supply chain, we have this part right here where it, the existing part was a casting but the supplier had damage to their tooling, and so there was a gap in where they could supply us that part. So we were able to turn to 3D printing and help us qualify this part. Wow, and what is this piece here? Oh, so this is an example of where we're using 3D printing to print a little bit more detailed, intricate type part. So this is an example of a traditional part that was made with many different pieces. We built it as one piece, and you can see the detail inside. It's amazing what these printers can do. Wow, look at the detail. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this printing process, it's, uh, it's layer by layer by layer, very fine detail. With these lasers, we can do things that were never possible before. Yeah. And so are you printing and developing that here on property? Yeah, we are. We have a few of these in uh, our SLM printer right now. Can we take a look at it? Absolutely. If you look inside, you'll see the parts that I just showed you. We finished the bill. I don't, I don't even see anything. I don't see a part. Oh, OK. That's, that's actually because the parts are buried below the powder. And we're going to raise that bill platform, and we're going to vacuum up that powder. And then we're going to reuse that powder. Oh, it's recyclable. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's recyclable for another bill. So now that Henry is shaking out all the powder inside these parts, you can see they're built as one piece. But here, we, we cut this part in half so you can see what's inside. Yeah. Right? So what's that is we cut these parts off the bail plate so that we can go and use them in our application. Right? But you know, what I want to do is I want to show you our engine assembly line. Okay. And I want to show you where we use some 3D printed parts in our product. All right, great. Let's great. Do it. Come on. Wow, this is a pretty busy production and assembly line. Can you give me some detail as to what goes on inside here, Brian? Yeah, so this is our 1319 APU engine build assembly, and it's where all the individual pieces come together to make up the finished engine that we're looking at right now. And uh, once they get done with this, they're gonna send it to the test cell and then to the customer for shipment. So Brian, I understand there is an engine here that you manufacture that has a pretty interesting story behind it. Can you take me to it? Yeah. So here we are about the middle stage of an APU build. APU stands for auxiliary power unit. 
and it has a lot of purposes, but one of them is to provide emergency backup power. So several years ago, there was an airplane that took off from New York City and it ran into a flock of birds that took out all of its engines. I remember that story. I think it was with um, Pilot Sully, and they even made a movie about it. They sure did, yeah. And so the APU kicked in and it let the pilot have the uh, control and power to guide that aircraft and land it on the river. And that's it? That's, it. that's exactly it. Oh, great. Can you take me to an engine that has 3D printed parts? Absolutely. Come on. All right, so where are you taking me to now? So I'm taking you to a much larger engine. And this is our HTF 7000. And it's different from our APU in that it is a propulsion engine. So it helps drive the aircraft. And we actually have several 3D printed parts qualified for this engine. Now I get to really see where those printed parts go. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I'd Let's love to see right it if you can show me. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Here's one of the 3D printed parts. And uh, you can hold it in your hands right there. Well, you know, they're, they're just always so light. <laughs> yeah, very cool. So the mechanics here are going to take these, and they're going to style them throughout the engine. They're bolted all up and um, they'll just go on completing the assembly. You know, I'm curious, do using 3D printed parts help in supply chain management in terms of you know, reducing delays and maybe increasing productivity? Yeah, absolutely. So this particular part, we were having difficulties getting from the supplier, and we were able to use 3D printing to help us continue on with our supply chain, building these engines and getting them to our customers. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. This is a part from more of a newer engine. And if you come with me, I have a little bit of a surprise uh, about a, a part that helped us with a much older engine. OK, I like surprises. are tired. I mean, this place is huge. I feel like I've walked 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So this is our uh, surprise part. Yeah. Okay. And it's actually a, um, a part that goes on a very old engine of ours. Right? And uh, we struggled for many years to get this part so that we could ship this engine to our customers. Right? And uh, it wasn't until a few years ago that we decided to turn to 3D printing to manufacture this part. And so what you see here is the result of all that work we did to qualify and get it into an engine. And so what type of plane did you specifically make this for? This goes on a Falcon 20G, and um, it's an older aircraft. And there are probably only less than a dozen left in the world. Wow. Um, yeah, so with that little volume, we were struggling to find suppliers who could provide us this part. But now they can fly those planes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. So by printing it, we were able to get that aircraft up and running again. Well, Brian, this has just been so informative. Thank you so much. I now understand 3D printing and the parts and where they go. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I've got to go do a hologram so I can report back to George at headquarters. And then I've got a plane to catch. So thanks so much. No problem. Hey George, you're not going to believe what I experienced during this whole trip. First, I drove to Michigan and met with the folks at SLM Solutions. They are the manufacturers out of Europe with a US office, and they make 3D additive manufacturing printers. This technology is truly advanced, and it's being used in various different industries, but we focused on aerospace, and they actually arranged an opportunity for me to go to Honeywell in Arizona to see how the 3D printers are made and used. And I have to tell you, it was a fantastic visit. I saw some very intricate parts being made and installed. One of them was a heat exchanger that was so complex that they cut it in half to allow me to see the internal workings of the part. It was a rare glimpse of the capabilities of 3D printing in this environment. Now, I know how much you like to geek out on 3D printing, so I managed to secure something for you to add to your collection of rare and unique display items. Be sure to keep an eye out for the postman and let me know when it arrives.
Thanks, Darius. Well, these are some presents, I'll tell you. You don't see technology like this every day. Look at the inside of this component. You couldn't manufacture something like this even 10 years ago. 3D printing continues to move forward at outrageous paces.